you want to play the best for you, you came to Scottsdale and played. You just said to the rest of the road, back to the centre, boys, he won't miss. I just love to wear the Scottsdale Footy Club jumper. It's a very history-dominated club. Attack, attack, attack! Retaliation! Get down, retaliate! I'm with Carl Beatty, who played in that amazing era of the Scottsdale Football Club after they joined the NTFA in the late 1940s. Carl, th uh, three premierships, th four premierships, and a three-time best and fairest. Um, what does the Scottsdale Football Club mean to you? Well, back in those days, it was almost everything because we were a small country town, and uh, we used to go to Launceston to the football and that, and then we got our own team, and I could remember following Scottsdale as a child. And then uh, we we got the coach from the mainland, Brian Donahue, and he got married and came over, and it st started in 61, and we went through, and then in 64 we made our first grand final. Talk us through that day because it's historic days. You mentioned the first premiership that Scottsdale won in the NTFA. Um, Brian described it coming home that the sidling looked like a Christmas tree because there were car lights bumper to bumper. Talk us through that era because that's an era now that people in this generation just wouldn't appreciate. What did that do for the town and what was it like? Well, it gave the town a great lift. And when we, before we, played in the grand final, like me and Brian were talking and he imagined what it'd be like after. At any rate, we came home and then we met at the uh, railway crossing and all together and we went up the main street and that was full and we got up on top of Rex's shop and everybody was so excited and that. And the strange thing was that you talk about drinking and this sort of thing, we may have had the odd drink, but we were all that happy and talked that much <laughs> with our old supporters who had been there for years. So it meant the world to the town and the, and the wider community. That's right, and I think it gave us a place in history sort of thing. It grew from there. It is one of the mo most uh, historic football clubs and one of the oldest ones in, in Tasmania. How important is the football club to the town, not only through your era, but the fact that it's still going today, because we have seen a lot of clubs go. Well, of course, it, it's most important in this building we're in, this was, we built it back in those days and it's been renovated and that. And the club at the moment is Cameron Moore and that, they're doing just a wonderful job. And of course, all the junior teams they've got, that's what, it's, it's a real family club. Yeah. This is your jumper and it's, uh an absolute privilege that we've got and you've just maintained so so much of your history here when you when you look at this jumper Carl and the number 14 stitched onto the back the jumpers are a lot different what 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 does this mean to you well perhaps not so much now but back in those days and that because I didn't know whether I would make the seniors and uh, so I was just fortunate and I suppose they, I had asthma when I was younger and uh, that almost affected me but I found when I was, if I felt my chest getting tight I just had to go harder and I'd come right. What was training like back in that era? We now know that, that in this day and age but it's so much more professional but what, what did training entail back then? Well it was pretty simple, it was Tuesday and Thursday night and you went and you ran a couple of laps and had a kick and this sort of thing. It wasn't nothing like the today sort of thing. But of course, most of us worked physically, which made a bit of a difference. I could remember one night, that was later on after this, when I was getting to the end of my career and I got behind with the laps and uh, coach made me do another one. And I said, well, we'll see who's going in the last quarter on Saturday. That's what counts, because I'd been uh, digging potatoes all day. 
<laughs> yeah, and that, that's the reality of it, isn't it, as yes. well, in terms of how strong people are and, and, and how fit they are. Just finally, you touched on, on Brian Donahue. What, what contribution did he make to the club coming over from Essendon back then? He then went back, of course, and um, assisted Kevin Sheedy in that great era in the, in the early mid-80s as well. But what did he bring to the Scottsdale Football Club? Well, you say, we never had a theme song. And of course, he brought that to us. It's up on the wall up there. And he, training, and he, he, he sort of, it was different. We sort of planned the matches and that sort of thing in those days. And he was great with fitness, and uh, but he was disciplined. And we weren't to drink after Thursday night. And uh, this boy. Young, young, one of the young ones, he met, saw somebody said he'd been in the hotel and he saw him up the street in the morning and he said, I'll see you this afternoon. He said, well, it doesn't matter. He said, we dropped you, you broke the rule. Tough back then, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right. Yeah, magnificent memories. Carl, um, it's been an absolute pleasure to have you here. Thank you for, for coming down and for your contribution that you've made to uh, to, to, to not only the club, because obviously you're a former mayor as well of Dorset in, yes. uh, in the latest, so you've had a, a, a major contribution to the year. But this, this, this region, obviously, um, a lot of memories for you on, on a personal scale as well as football. Oh, yes. No, it, it's, it's one of those things because many of your teammates have passed on and uh, still like Rex Lethberg, he's a close friend still. And it's, it's just... It's been my life, sort of. Yeah, well, it's been a great part of your life and um, we thank you for the amazing contribution you've made to uh, not only the football club, but the, the greater Dorset region over a long time as well. Thank you. Good, thanks. You. Legend of the Scottsdale Football Club, 316 games, fourth on the all-time players list, uh, equal with the great Stephen Nichols. Ken, um, some amazing memories here in, in this room, and this must bring back a, a lot of memories to you over uh, the seasons you had with Scottsdale. Yeah, it certainly does. Uh, long time ago now, but still good memories. We look behind us here and uh, we've got a, got a photo of you here in this uh, state final. You are part of that uh, squad back in, in 1964 playing there at West Park. It was uh, different days back then, wasn't it? Yep, yep. And what are some of your great memories of, of, of playing with, with the Scottsdale Football Club? Oh, just um, especially with Kevin Simons and Manigan in and they'd come from Burnie the year before, won premierships there and, and uh, they brought winning style of football with them. Yeah. 1973, uh, that famous day for the Scottsdale Football Club winning the, the state final. Uh, 32 points down, Scottsdale were at, at three quarter time. What did the, the legendary uh, Bobby Wilson say to the troops uh, in that, for, at that last break? Because oh, it, was, it was a rail, it was a steamroll in that last quarter. Yeah, he changed the team round a bit and uh, yeah, I, he says he didn't hear it, but he come over the public address where advising all the Bernie supporters to book their flight to, to uh, Adelaide for, for the, the games over there. Oh, they had a national carnival and, yeah, back then. And uh, Bob reckons he didn't hear it, but a lot of the players did, and I think that helped spur us on a bit as well. Um, talk us through, you uh, played an instrumental part in that last quarter. You kicked the goal that put Scottsdale in front Talk us through that moment because how did that feel to you? You're very accurate set shot for goal, but I think Bobby Wilson was pretty pretty confident you were about to put him in front. Yeah, he helped put pressure on things. He, he just said to the rest of the boat, back to the centre boys, he won't miss. And yeah, that puts pressure on, but anyhow, it went through the middle, so. What sort of coach was he? Oh, he was, yeah, very team oriented and a uh, bit before his time, handball was attacking then, not like before then, most people just used it as a defence, but he used it as an attack. And yeah. He described you, Ken, as the best 
team man that he ever coached. That's a big statement from a, from a guy that had such a successful and illustrious coaching career. It is a team game. Why, why did he hold you in that light, do you think? Oh, i got no idea. He's a fairly, <laughs> fairly good bullshit artist. So. <laughs> um, the club now, obviously, it, it, it's football's a lot different back then. Do you still enjoy the game, watching the game today? Yeah, not as much as, yeah, I sort of enjoyed the older style more than, more than the, the, so much running and that nowadays. Um, you've been inducted into the Tasmanian Football Hall of Fame, but there's also another, you know, and that's for football legends, but there's another legendary moment, probably not a good moment at, at that particular point in, in life when uh, you had a workplace accident, you've only ended up with uh, half a big toe and, and all your other toes disappeared, but that didn't stop your footy career, did it? No, no, I had no intentions of playing football again, but well, the president at the time, uh, it was late in the season and the reserves was going to be short, so he asked me to sit on the bench. And uh, yeah, it just went from there and three or four games later, we played in a, in a pre and won a premiership in the seniors, so lucky. Amazing. Uh, the boots must have been pretty strong back then. How did it feel actually kick? Because it was on your, your natural kicking foot. Uh, did that take a lot of getting used to? It certainly did. It certainly yeah, learnt me to kick a little bit left footed. And you were uh, at, at obviously a, a very good set shot for goal. Did your uh, accuracy, um, was that diminished in any way, uh, losing all those toes? No. You're still a good shot. Yeah, yeah. And talk us about um, Scott, how important the Scottsdale Football Club is to the town. You, you still live and farm in, in, in the area. How, how important is this club? Well, I think it's very important, and especially to try and keep it going the way all the country clubs and that have, have fallen by the wayside and that. And, yeah, some, something for the young people. What do you think keeps the club going? Because you mentioned well, there are a lot of clubs and associations, obviously the NEFU as well went uh, probably around four years ago now, but what do you think it is about the club? Is it the people that just keeps this going? Yeah, I think it's the people and the, and the general community. Well, you've uh, had a great career. We've got some great pictures here of, of, of you. That's an amazing photo that's now nearly nearly 60 years old with some, some very famous uh, names in there as well. And we've obviously seen a lot of players um, through family history with the Lethborgs. We've got the Millwoods, of course. Um, it, it, it's Wish Wilsons, it's just, a, it's a great thing. But well done to you on a, on, a, on a great career. And it's lovely to have you as our guest here for, as we take a look back at the Scottsdale Football Club. Right, thanks very much.